everyone, and welcome to episode 55 of Art for Art's Sake. I'm Maggie McKenna, the Executive Director of St. Lawrence County Arts Council, SLC Arts, and I'm here today with Camilla Amarati and Ruth McWilliams from Tawny to discuss the St. Lawrence County Barn Quilt Map. Um, they're going to show you all sorts of fun things about that project that we've been a partner on um, for a for quite some time now. Um, I want to thank you for, for showing up and checking out what we're doing here. Art for Art's Sake is a new program from the St. Lawrence County Arts Council. Um, New-ish, I continue to say, because we are now moving into a new phase of it and um, kind of reworking the program in a way to make sure that it's something that you all are interested in and excited about. Um, if you have any suggestions, send them our way. Um, if you'd like to be involved in, in Art for Art's Sake, you can email our program coordinator, Jenna, at programs at slcartscouncil.org. And if you'd like to support this program and other programs like it, you can make a donation to slcartscouncil.org slash give right now or a little later. And um, we really appreciate your support. Um, that's pretty much all I have. So let me pass it on over to Camilla and Ruth and I'll jump in where we're needed. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. So I'm Camilla Amorati. I'm the Director of Research and Programs at Tawny Traditional Arts in Upstate New York. And we are a folk arts organization dedicated to researching and showcasing the living traditions and heritage and everyday culture of Northern New York. Um, and I'm here with Ruth McWilliams. We were co-curators on the St. Lawrence County Barn Quilts exhibit which is here around and behind me. And Ruth is an amazing and prolific barn quilt maker and teacher among other many things um, and, and partner and instigator in this whole set of projects around this exhibit and this map. And it's been such a pleasure getting to do all that with, with you and with Maggie and other, other partners in the project. Um, and we're very excited to be here to talk today about the Google map, the online Google map of barn quilts in St. Lawrence County. So this is a map, you'll hear a little more about it later uh, or soon, that is, um, it's an online map intended for anybody in St. Lawrence County to be able to list their own barn quilt up on that map so that when people are interested in checking them out, they can go see this map and, and look around at the barn quilts all around the county, of which there are quite a few. Um, so this all started, um, kind of came out of work going on around existing barn quilt, the creation of barn quilt trails in our county that are now well established um, and a tourism project, the Barnquilt Tourism Project that Tawny and partners, um, these partners here and others worked on in 2019. So I'm gonna ask Ruth to say a little bit about that project and how the Google map came out of it and the trails themselves that anything you'd like people to know about that. Thanks a lot, Camilla. Well, the Barnquilt Tourism Project really had as a premise that barn quilts are public art and we were viewing the barn quilts as art that could help give a sense of place and identity for the county, but also be an economic driver. So we were really looking at how we could not only support tourism opportunities, both from US travelers and Canadian travelers, but also how we could support economic development based upon the character and culture of the area. And, and so, doing also support local businesses, local barn quilters who are making and selling barn quilts. So that did become the basis for our partners to come together for this map project. And it, the map project builds upon um, quite extensive trails that are both in the town of Hammond through a High Hammond Barn Quilt Trail Committee, but also through the town of Colton um, through a town school art around town project. Um, as of last year, we have well over 100 barn quilts in the town of Colton and Hammond is, is close to that as well. So there are lots of barn quilts up, not only in Colton and Hammond, but in places in between throughout the county. And so this really is a great opportunity for literally people to get their barn quilt on the map. It's great. And so as part of those, that, that project that we worked on, inspired by the trails, um, and I should mention the partners in that were the St. Lawrence County Arts Council, Tawny representatives from the trails in Colton and Hammond, and the St. Lawrence County Chamber of Commerce, and then many others from other locations around the county um, got very involved as well and were really helpful in pulling together some events and, um, and other things around that 
project over 2019. And one of the things that came out of it that was part of the plan was this exhibit that I'm sitting in at the moment here at the Tawny Center in Canton, New York. Um, and the idea was to work with artists over the year, identify places where people were making a lot of barn quilts or interested in getting involved in barn quilting, and then feature a number of them to represent work going on around the county um, in this exhibit. So I'll do just a little quick, <laughs> just a little peek around me. You can see there are, um, this is the downstairs gallery, and there's more upstairs, and there's a shop area, the barn quilts and beyond folk store spotlight area that has, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> there we go, in that direction. Um, that sells barn quilts and related things. Um, but the exhibit has a representation of dozens of barn quilt artists and locations around the county. Um, it involves, you know, mainly barn quilts as you're seeing, but also um, the barn quilts themselves had a lot of variation in terms of size from, you know, sort of mini, mini productions to an eight by eight that we have upstairs. Um, the kind of standard format with a, um, MDO board and high quality exterior paints, um, but also variations in materials used. Um, one's made out of wood blocks, one's made on metal, um, all kinds of different things. A couple other special projects involved, the Towns of St. Lawrence County Barn Quilt Mural, um, which is over in that direction. Um, oops, sorry, this direction. <laughs> it's behind me and you can see above the um, quilt sampler that Jill Joseph's made in connection with that. We have, um, one of the walls of them, new works that were inspired by barn quilts made by artists in their own medium um, to reflect on the concept of a barn quilt. There's a storybook, there's a set of painted sap buckets also inspired by the Towns of St. Lawrence County barn quilt mural. Um, so quite a range of barn quilts themselves and related projects. Um, represents a range of traditionality and forms, um, community projects, community distribution projects, and then just all kinds of um, independent inspirations that people have had and acted on. So um, we've been really excited to get to work with all the artists and partners in putting this together. And it is up at the Tawny Center through October of this year, which is 2020. Um, and, um, and yeah, we hope people will come and check it out. Meanwhile, we're also really excited to have this map and the map project featured in the exhibit as well. Um, and this is a way that, you know, we're so excited to have the exhibit here, but happy as well to know that it's part of you know, a living exhibit that's all around our county all the time that people can come and see anytime going forward um, on their own, take a drive around, take a walk around and see them. And this Google map, um, this online map of St. Lawrence County barn quilts is the way that people can find where there are barn quilts to go see. And as we said, a way that they can list their own if they want to show how they're, you know, part of this um, town-wide living quilt in a way of all these barn quilt squares all around the landscape. Um, so, so that's, um, that's an idea of the exhibit. Um, Ruth, would you like to say a little bit more about the, any more about the map itself, like what it is or its purpose and importance, how it relates to- Sure, sure. Numbers? One of the things that I was intrigued with early on while helping create the trail in the town of Colton is what was the motivation for people, you know, participating and being part of it. And it was everything from, you know, local quilters and the, there is a healthy, um, quilting tradition throughout the county. So everything from local quilters wanting to express, you know, their love of quits, quilts through barn quilts on the outside, as well as their fabric quilts on the inside. But also, you know, history, you know, a number of the barn quilts really do reflect not only a history of the place where the barn quilt is, but the history of the county or whatever. And for instance, there's a series of five barn quilts over at the St. Lawrence County Historical Association that really reflect on the history of the county. Um, but it also from a tourism standpoint, you know, we're really trying to encourage people to travel around the countryside, experience what the, you know, there is to offer in the county. Of course, 2020 is a more difficult time. But, you know, the idea is that if people are in the county and traveling around, they're also spending money in the communities, you know, for food or for, you know, housing or whatever. So, you know, there were a lot of motivations for um, why people want to participate. And when you go on the, um, the national map, and perhaps, Camilla, you could show the, um, sure. the Barn Quilt Info um, website page. If you go on the Barn Quilt Info um, page, you will see that there is a, um, 
there's a nationwide map and then on the nationwide map you can click on a state and when you click on a state then you can also click see what counties from the national perspective they believe um, have um, barn quilt trails and I will tell you the the Hammond barn quilt trail committee is responsible for getting um, St. Lawrence County um, listed on the national map it is now our hope and wish that as we develop the countywide map that the references will expand beyond what the Hammond folks are doing but will also include our whole countywide venture because St. Lawrence County is a very large place you know it's much larger than many counties across the country in fact I think um, it's something like maybe 2,500 to 3,000 square miles it's big and for instance, it takes me well over an hour to get from Colton to Hammond. So, you know, there is a lot of territory to cover in St. Lawrence County. And so we do think the map um, will be a great place um, and way for us to entice people to come visit. Um, and it's a good thing to do, rain or shine, you know. So um, that's kind of where our motivation has been and, and how we relate to this nationwide um, enthusiasm for barn quilts. And I guess it's worth noting that at this moment in 2020, it's actually a perfect time to do something like this because you can take your own car trip around and it's kind of an outdoor, make your own exhibit adventure. So, <laughs> so it's a perfect thing to do right now, in fact. That's true. Um, so great, thank you so much. And Maggie, would you like to say a little bit about um, how this I think we're losing you, Camilla. Oh, yeah. am I back? Yeah, you're back. Now. <laughs> you want to do that one again? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying thank you so much, Ruth, for, um, for sharing that. And Maggie, would you like to say a little bit about how the Google Map is carried on and hosted by the Arts Council and what it means for the Arts Council? Absolutely. So you just hit it right on the head that, that this is an awesome project for right now because we really are pushing public art in our region as much as possible and this fits right in with that whole concept. Um, public art is a great way to build community and to bring a vast geographical region, as Ruth said, together through specific art projects and programs. Um, and we've been working on that actually most recently with an async arts project, so we can talk about that more later. But the map is going to be hosted long term on the SLC Arts Council website. It's slcartscouncil.org slash barn dash quilt dash trails or trail. Um, and we are really excited to keep that up because it'll be a wonderful resource in the long term. Um, people, you'll be showing them how to submit to that. We, our graphic designer, Catherine LaPointe Vollmer, put this up and has been working on this project um, all along here. And she's the one who actually enters the very detailed information after you submit a form. Um, so it's not automatic, but <laughs> you can go on there and check out um, all the all of the quilts that have been barn quilts that have been um, added over the last couple of years um, and hopefully new ones will jump up very soon after this. <laughs> so I, Maggie, I would note that when we were working with Catherine to get it up initially, um, both Hammond and Colton provided the, our lists of existing barn quilts. So they're at least listed. Um, we are hoping that owners of those barn quilts will add more to it and as we explain what what you can submit, um, it'll be more clear to those owners what they, they could or should do, hopefully, to help us populate the information. But uh, it was front end loaded, not only with Colton and, and Hammond, but also, I believe, all around Canton and perhaps some in Potsdam. Yeah, and several people at our events over 2019, we had a series of barn quilt parties celebrating barn quilt activity around the county, which were lots of fun. And we got a number of people who shared their information then um, in hard copy forms, which is um, some, one of the ways people can do it. So I'll say a little more about that as well. Um, all right, so I guess I'll go ahead and show you how to submit something if you're thinking, well, great, so how do I do it? Well, we'll tell you. So here we go. Um, 
I'm going to um, share my screen again and I'll show you first, you go to the Arts Council page and I'll show you how to go through the process here. Um, all right, so if you were either check out the barn quilt map or you own the barn quilt map, um, you would go to the Lawrence County Arts Council page and oh, did you lose me for a second? Yes, should I say all that again? <laughs> all right, so here we are. Um, if you are looking to check out the St. Lawrence County Barn Quilts Google Map or to add your own listing to it, you would go to the St. Lawrence County Arts Council website. So if you follow along on my screen, here's slcartscouncil.org, and you'd go to programs. You can see Barn Quilt Trail there, you'd select that. And if you were just wanting to take a look at the map, um, there it is. You can read a little bit about it. Um, you can find a little more about the websites for the trails themselves, and then you can look at the current listings. So here's the map itself, and it's, it's active. You, you, know, you sort of click on it. Um, you can you know, sort of move your hands to zoom it in or out, or use the little buttons to zoom it in or out. And you can see that here's listings from all around the county. When you fill out a form, um, you are requested to put in addresses only in St. Lawrence County. So it is um, in our county here. And you can see all these different listings. And when you want to check one out, um, you just click on the little house symbol and it will show you what that barn quilt is there, um, some information about it, if it has a name, the address where it can be seen, um, the owner, when it was created, when it was installed, and if they've shared a story with us about the meaning of the barn quilt design or the process of making it or anything else, um, it would be shared here and you can check that out. Um, so if you're just coming to take a look, that's how you would go about it. Um, and we'll come back to another couple examples. Um, but also I wanna show you if you're coming to submit your own, you would scroll down a little bit further past the map and here are instructions here. And it tells you you're going to need to fill out a submittable account and you click on the link here. Tells you a little bit more about it. Um, and if you are ready to create your account, you go down and hit that button. It's noting that anything listed here is gonna be fully visible online. So that's, that's the whole point is that it's listing it online. So, um, you know, the idea is that you're going to say the location where it's going to be. And then you enter your email address, you make up a password, you confirm the password and you hit sign up. And then it brings you to this form. So I would say, especially because it sort of seems that once somebody makes a barn quilt, they wanna make a lot more barn quilts. So definitely keep track of your sign-in information so that you can come back to your account. And anytime you want to add a new barn quilt, you come and sign in again and fill out a new form. So to add your listing, you go through and you answer the questions, your name, your number, your email, and these things are not going to be published. These things are so that we can get back to you if we have questions about your listing and need to reach you. Um, and then some more questions here. Are you the owner of the property where the barn quilt is? Um, hold on a second, I'm just gonna say, not now, computer, here we go. Um, if you're the owner of the property, you let us know, it's, it's okay either way, but here we go, here's a key question. If not, do you have permission from the property owner to list this barn quilt? Um, please list the property owner's name and contact information. And then we ask for your street address so that people can see, go and find the barn quilt. It says St. Lawrence County locations only. Um, so location information, parking notes. Um, so some are very obvious. You drive by and there's a spot to pull over and check it out. Um, in some cases, there might be other situations like there's nowhere safe to park right there, but there's a parking lot around the corner. Um, it might be actually this barn quilt is only visible by water. So um, you know, if you want to see it, you have to, here's where the boat launch is, and you'll see it when you're going down this part of the Racket River, whatever it might be. Um, 
you put that description in here so that people can figure out how to find it and how to safely stop their cars to look at it. The name of the design, if you know it or if you've made it up, um, you put it in there. When was the barn quilt painted? When was the barn quilt installed? And then um, here are the questions that, that I personally am most excited about. It's all important. But what is the meaning of the design or pattern chosen? Um, people so often choose patterns that are really meaningful to them for all kinds of reasons. The imagery in it connects to something about their experience or their traditions or their interests. Um, or, you know, maybe they have quilting in their background or woodwork in their background and um, they've chosen a pattern that represents that somehow. Um, tell us the story of your barn quilt is a chance to just say more about it or, you know, if there's, you've explained the pattern, but there's something you want to share about um, your background and interest and how you got into barn quilting, why you made this particular barn quilt, um, what it represents about you or about your process, really anything that you want to share about it, anything interesting or fun um, about the actual barn quilt, the installation, the connection to the property, whatever it might be. Um, and then we invite you to upload up to three pictures of your barn quilt um, so that your listing will have an image of the barn quilt. And, you know, sometimes people will, we always want to see the barn quilt itself so that we can you know, if someone's driving by, they can kind of match it, they get a sense of what they're going out to look at. Um, it's also really great. I saw one where, um, you might have it up here. Yeah, where somebody included a photo um, of the barn quilt itself, but also the house that they were going to put it on. <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> it's turned over, but you see the barn quilt and how, um, how they were picking up on the colors of the house to, um, they wanted to paint a barn quilt that would, um, match up with their house so or with the house that it was going on so something like that where the one of the photos can be a reference for um, explaining further about the inspiration for the quilt um, but the main thing is to see the quilt itself so you have that for reference um, and then you go ahead and submit it and you I have not answered all those questions so I'm not going to click the button um, but you submit it or you save your draft um, so that you can come back to it and Basically, once you've submitted it, you'll get um, a message saying that you've submitted it. Um, and then what happens is that information goes to the Arts Council and Catherine receives it and she enters it and puts the listing up. So if there are any questions about the submission, we'll get in touch with you. Um, if you have another one to list, you go ahead through that process again and submit the things. If you have an edit or an update to one that you've submitted, um, you can reach out to, there's going to be an email that's listed on the page that lets you know um, if you have any changes to make or, or questions or anything like that, you can email that email address um, to send in those updates. Um, and same goes for, as Ruth was saying, if your, um, you know, if your barn quilt was listed as part of that preloading process, but there wasn't a story associated, we'd love to hear from you and add to your listing whatever your story is or any further photos you might have or anything like that. So, um, so you can email that email address and send those changes in. Um, so I had just pulled up one or two little examples. They're all, you know, they're all great and there are so many to choose from, but you know, here's another where the barn quilt is called Hop and it says the pattern um, represents um, where the owner's husband brews his home beer and that the, the image of the hops was a gift for him. So, you know, it can be, often they are gifts, often they're about people's interests and activities. Um, that's a perfect example of that. Um, you know, there are also some examples that are where someone might say, for instance, um, I like sugaring, so I selected a, a sugar maple design. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a four page description of, of your history and interests. It can be something as simple as that. I really like this thing, so I chose this pattern. Whatever it is, we'd love to hear from you about it. So I think that's, um, that's the key things. Um, Ruth, did you have any particular examples you would like to point out? Um, there is one that we just installed, or actually a series of three, we just installed in the town of Colton near the Colton Hepburn Library. Um, could you by chance get, find your way to Colton? <laughs> well, then I'm gonna. And there's, I know you're gonna have to um, zoom so that you can kind of, okay, get over to Colton. St. Lawrence County geography lesson over here. <laughs> yes. yes. All right, see where it says Little Red Schoolhouse. You could even click on that one. That was the first one that uh, went up in the town of Colton. Sorry, I feel like I was just looking at it and I lost you it. You were. Get your cursor up. 
okay, no, go north, <laughs> and no <now> east. <laughs> no, down, down, come down. Okay, you're you're in. You need to get. Oh, see where little red schoolhouse is. You could click on that one if you want. As you or see open the book. There's open book. That's fine. That's the one. That's. Whatever you open, I'll talk about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we are. This is one of the new ones um, that went up in the town of Colton. So through our town school um, art around town project, it does feature barn quilts. We actually work with the elementary art club during the school year. And before the schools closed down, the art club last, um, last winter during 2019 to 2020 actually painted a series of bookshelf inspired barn quilts for the friends of the library um, and they have a, a little building called the book nook where they sell um, excess books um, and donated books and so this is actually one of three barn quilts that went up Earlier this year, after the town's Winterfest, we, we actually displayed the three barn quilts during the annual quilt show during our, our Winter Festival. And this is one of them, it's called an open book design. And I will tell you, this particular design is so well liked that um, we're doing one very similar to it right now for the library in Morristown. So that one will probably be showing up hopefully within the next few weeks in Morristown as well. It'll look a little different, it'll be a lot bigger. But anyway, you can see what we've entered about it. It's called an open book barn quilt. It's got the location, it's one of three. It actually sits in a parking area behind the library. Um, I've talked a little bit about the, that the friends of the library wanting the students to paint it. Um, art teacher Crystal Hewer and I are the ones that work with the students. And then if you scroll down, I did submit three pictures, but Catherine ended up adding a picture as well, a couple pictures of the library to give people a sense of where the book nook was relative. So this is right after we installed, there's one of the young students who painted it. This is a libra the library photo. Um, there's a library photo in winter. <laughs> so, yeah, student, the three, and then the picture of the barn quilt itself. So, um, but we would hope that people would submit photos, um, clearly one of the barn quilt, but the context for it is really, I think, interesting as well. And one of the things I find for myself about barn quilts, sort of the before and after, after barn quilts are added to a building or a location, it's hard to imagine it without the barn quilt. So seeing it before and after is a fun, is a fun idea. Um, the, uh, the, I will say to the friends of the library were very interested in having barn quilts added to the book nook because just across the highway, um, the students actually did a series of bird barn quilts. There's a series of six birds bird designs um, just across the highway. So when you stand at the book nook and you look across State Highway 56, you see six other barn quilts. So it, it's a fun thing to do and um, getting them on the map will certainly help people come visit our, our communities. There's, that's the Little Red Schoolhouse. That was the first one we actually did in the town of Colton with the under our town school art around town project and the picture that is loaded is actually our DPW guys um, installing it <laughs> just in time for Winterfest, I think back in 2015. So that, that's the oldest one we actually have up in the town. And that does spring to mind. People often ask, well, how long can we really expect these things to last? And I will say, if you use good materials, the proper board, the proper paints, primer and paints, I think they will last for sure 10 years, if not longer. I've monitored this one um, all along and it still looks in great condition um, after five years. So 10 years plus is what I tell people. So those are my examples right now, Camilla. I, I turn it back to you. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the idea of the map. And as Ruth was saying, um, 
you know, we really love to hear, hear stories, see photos with the context of things. Um, it just kind of fills out the story a little bit more. And again, if you have one listed, but don't have that information up and want to add anything, you can, if you submit something um, and need to update it later, you can. Um, and above all, we just really encourage people both to go ahead and list, send in their listings um, and to check out the listings that are there and go around and see them in person. Um, and so I guess I'll say just a little about our, um, a plan that we have also for tomorrow. Um, for anyone who's watching today, there's actually an event tomorrow, the call in Google Map Day, um, where you can call in to the Tawny Center at 315-386-4289 if you are interested in listing and you can find that information on our website anytime at www.tawny.org, T-A-U-N-Y. Um, Cause we know that some people are interested in listing stuff but um, ha might have some trouble with the process or have questions about the process. And we'll be here from 10 to four tomorrow to answer any questions. So go ahead and call on in if you have questions about it, if you want, um, us to be on the phone with you while you go through the process on your computer so we can kind of walk you through it or answer questions as they come up or, you know, connect you with someone if you need um, more help than we can give for some reason. Um, but we'll do our best to, to help get things sorted out. Um, so yeah, give us a call tomorrow if you're interested. You can also email, um, email me camilla at tawny.org, C-A-M-I-L-L-A or just programs at tawny.org if you want to send in a question about a listing or, um, or anything else. And obviously, as we said before, keep an eye on the map for um, the email reference there if you have specific stuff that you wanna send in after, um, you know, after these couple days. Um, just one other thing I'll say about making submissions to it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step, I'm gonna give you a chance to just soak up the exhibit for just a moment. And I'll be back, here we go with um, you also may have seen around, this is a paper form about submitting your map. These are available in our exhibit at the Tawny Center. Um, you might find them other places as well. It's the same questions that you'll find on the submittable account. Um, but if for some reason you, um, you really feel that you need to do it in paper form rather than online, this is an option as well. Um, so you can pick up one of these forms in the exhibit at the Tawny Center and you can turn it back into us here um, with a note that it's for me, Camilla Amirati. Um, and we will take it from there and either share it with the Arts Council or help get your listing up. And then we would need you to, um, you know, bring in hard copy photos that we could scan or, you know, email us photos or um, get the photos to us another way if you're turning in a paper form. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Is there um, anything either of you want to add about the process or what happens when people submit things? Yeah, I'll just also mention that Submittable, the site that we use for all of our different um, registration things for calls for artists or employment, um, it's a really great program that has really awesome customer service. So if there's anything that that Tawny or the Arts can Council can't sort out that's technical with Submittable, you can also contact Submittable's customer service and they can help you with some of those things as well. Great. Um, wonderful. Yeah. So, and then about tomorrow, um, again, give us a call if you'd like to talk with us about um, any concerns you have about your listings. And if you're watching this at another later time, um, keep an eye out for um, possible further call-in days of that sort or, um, you know, days for people to come in and bring in their information. Also, you can follow us anytime at the Tawny Center on Facebook or Instagram or um, drop us a line if you want to be added to um, to our email list that you can hear about upcoming programs, events, projects, all kinds of things. Or if you have questions about barn quilts or the Google map, um, you can reach us that way as well. So, um, so yeah, keep an eye out um, for other upcoming things. Join us tomorrow if you'd like. Drop us a line if you miss it, but you have questions. Um, and I think that's, yeah, I think that's it. The exhibit will be up through the end of October, as I said before. And we do invite people to come by and take a look around. There's all kinds of wonderful stuff to see, um, as well as the drives you can take around the county to check out the barn quilts in their natural environment. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Camilla and Ruth, for joining us today. Um, this has been such a great, a great event here uh, to, to hear about the park, barn quilt trail. Um, this thank you so much for hosting it and having us today and hosting the map. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and 
you know, you're also a Tawny holding uh, Async Arts Chalk Art event this whole yes. month of July. So um, the whole theme around that is summer traditions. And maybe some people will also draw some barn quilts. Why not? I'm sure hoping. Definitely making barn quilts and going to enjoy barn quilts is a major summer tradition for a lot of people. So we do really invite people to come and take a look. It's on the sidewalk right out front of the Tawny Center in the middle of downtown Canton at 53 Main Street. And there's chalk out there and there are little index cards and pens if you want to share a story about your summer traditions. Um, and we hope you'll come and draw some pictures or add some words about your, yeah, your summer traditions and things you love to do and, and see in the North Country. Love it. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day. This has been Art for Art's Sake. Thanks very much. Thank you.